What happens to your metabolism as you age? Can we know that our metabolism slows down? We know that we eventually, well, weaken and die, but what is happening at the metabolic level? You see, we tend to think that metabolism just has to do with our diet and our weight and our waistline. No, 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 it's far beyond that. Metabolism is, is everything. And at the end of the day, it's our slowing and aging metabolism that leads to death. And I know that's kind of dark, but it's something that we have to understand. And if we can educate ourselves on what the pillars or the sort of the hallmarks of aging are, then perhaps we can allow ourselves to have the tools to live a little bit longer. Now, I'm not 100 years old, so I can't speak to any of this being a personal testament, but I can say I've done the research and I look at things. And when we compare ourselves to cars, for instance, things make a little bit more sense. So I'm gonna start this video off by comparing ourselves to cars. And then I'm gonna go one by one and talk about the pillars of aging and how they slow our metabolism and things that we might be able to do to correct them. Okay, so we're like cars in the sense that our mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouses within the cell, those are like little engines, okay? They create energy. And when they create energy, they also create reactive oxygen species. They also create waste, just like a car engine. Okay? When you have a brand spanking new engine and you start that car for the first time, that engine is never the same. It has carbon dust. It's now older. It now has a little bit of wear and tear on it. And that just continues on and on and on. And eventually, different components of the car are gonna weaken and die and the car's gonna break and eventually it's just done. Well, imagine that in your body, okay? So in theory, a car could last forever if you replace everything the second that it goes wrong, right? But the problem is you don't always know when something goes wrong and sometimes that can be catastrophic and that happens inside your body too and that's where prevention comes in hand, right? Now again, also with a car, you look at the make and the model. The make and the model can determine largely the longevity of a car, right? A little Toyota might last a lot longer than a Ford. I mean, who knows, right? The thing is, is that is your genetics. The make and model at the end of the day is your genetics. You are built with some potential that's built in, but at the end of the day, it's the maintenance that really makes up the most of it. Now, the journalist Cell in 2013 published what they considered were the nine hallmarks of aging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these pillars one by one. And I'm gonna talk about how intermittent fasting and keto play critical roles in keeping these issues at bay. And this is all backed by science. So let's have some fun with this. But first, I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. And then after this video, please check out Yujito Matcha. So green tea is obviously a great way to combat reactive oxygen species, the things I'm talking about in this video. So why not make it taste good, make it convenient. So please do check them out in the description after you watch this video. Okay, so the first pillar that we need to talk about is called genomic instability. Okay, this is simply DNA damage. This is one of the pillars per journal cell simply because DNA damage is a huge thing. If we have DNA damage, then our body doesn't repair properly. And if our body doesn't repair properly, then eventually, well, we die. And I know that's sad and pessimistic, but it's the truth. Well, the cool thing is that ketones, which are created through, of course, a ketogenic diet, but largely through fasting and intermittent fasting, well, they do some interesting things. They upregulate what is called PPAR, which actually protects the DNA. Okay? And it also upregulates NADPH, which also protects the DNA. Long story short is it has a lot of protective measures in it, which make it so that down the line, directly and indirectly, we protect ourselves from this oxidative damage that affects our DNA. But that one's not all that exciting. Let's go ahead and move on. The second hallmark pillar of aging is going to be telomere attrition. Telomeres are the little protective end caps on the end of our DNA often referred to like the caps on a shoelace, okay? So our shoelaces would fray if we didn't have those little plastic caps. Well, as we age, those plastic caps get shorter and shorter and shorter, and eventually our DNA frays and things don't work well anymore. Well, it's our job to protect those little telomeres, and we protect it through something known as telomerase, which is an enzyme that, of course, encourages the lengthening of those telomeres. Well, in the same way that ketones increase NADPH to protect against DNA damage, they also increase that telomere length. They also protect from telomere shortening. So now we're two for two in terms of how ketones from keto and fasting protect us from aging and potentially make us our metabolism doesn't slow down. Now, full disclaimer, we can't entirely control our metabolism, but everything that I'm talking about here as far as aging goes has a direct relationship with your overall just metabolism from a fat loss standpoint too. If our metabolism is slowing down from an aging standpoint, it's slowing down from a, well, digestive and weight gain standpoint too, or weight loss standpoint, I should say. So just know that. 
Okay, number three is going to be mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, I'm not just pulling these out of the hat, right? I'm like actually talking about pillars that are set up in the journal cell. So mitochondrial dysfunction means we start to die, we start to age because our mitochondria is no longer functioning well. They're getting worn out and the mitochondrial biogenesis isn't really occurring that well anymore. Well, the good news is ketones from, again, keto and fasting come in huge handy here. Why? Because the mitochondria can run a lot more efficiently on ketones. You see, when we're running on glucose, it burns up the mitochondria a lot. Ketones are a more efficient fuel, which means that we get more bang for our buck. We get more mileage out of our mitochondria when they're burning ketones than when they're burning glucose. So it's like quite literally running on a cleaner fuel that is better for your engine. There's just no simpler way to say it than that. Number four is going to be epigenetic alterations. Now, epigenetic alterations refer to things like uh, as we age, our genetics change and they tend to sort of mold to our environment. So if we expose ourselves to different things, then our genetics can change. And this can be good and bad, right? If we're exposed to a lot of toxic stuff, then it can change our DNA in a bad way. Well, okay, how could ketones and fasting and all this possibly help here? Guess what? It all has to do with what are called HDAC, so histone deacetylase inhibition. Now, ketones are an inhibitor of HDAC, which means they unlock the blueprint. So normally our blueprints to our DNA are under lock and key, and they cannot get unlocked very easily. But ketones, just kind of like the name implies, key, ketones are the key to unlocking the blueprints. Basically, it opens up the blueprint so it can be read, transcribed, and ultimately allow tissues and proteins and things like that to be rebuilt. So this makes us so our body is less likely to succumb to the changes of our environment in a negative fashion. So there's some huge proof there. So the inhibition of HDAC is a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous factor when it comes down to keeping us young and keeping our metabolisms healthy as we age. The next one is going to be a loss of proteostasis. This is basically another way of saying losing autophagy, okay? So autophagy is where our cells have the ability to take old, weak parts of other cells or themselves and consume them for fuel and use them. It's a survival of the fittest mechanism. So basically what happens when we're under a lot of stress or we're in a time where we need fuel because we're fasting or anything like that, what happens is our cells have the ability to digest the weaker components of themselves to make them stronger. So it's literally survival of the fittest in every sense of the word. Well, the good news is in 2019, there's a Nobel Prize awarded in the world of HIF1-alpha. Now, HIF1-alpha inhibits mTOR. I'll get to this in a second, but mTOR is the opposite of autophagy, okay? So if we have mTOR elevated, then autophagy can occur. If mTOR is suppressed, then autophagy can occur. It turns out that ketones upregulate this HIF1-alpha, which means indirectly by upregulating HIF1-alpha, we end up triggering the suppression of mTOR, which activates autophagy, which therefore stops this loss of proteostasis. We can ultimately live longer, in theory. Next up is going to be cellular senescence. That is a fancy way of saying cell death. Now again, we start going down a rabbit hole, we can find there's all kinds of ways that ketones potentially stop cellular death. There was a 2018 study that was published in the journal Cell that found that ketones do actually prevent senescence from occurring through activation of what's called HNRHPA1 upregulation of OCT4. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one right there because that even goes beyond what I know. But the point is there is some science that's come out in the last couple of years that is showing that ketones prevent this premature cellular death. Now we know about that in the liver, we know about that in some other tissues, when we look at it in the aggregate and the whole, well, it's pretty darn interesting. So anyhow, I'll link down below if you wanna investigate that yourself because it is definitely long-winded. The next one that's on the list is going to be stem cell exhaustion. We eventually run out of stem cells. When you're born, you have a bunch of stem cells, right? That's why they always say to harvest some stem cells from your umbilical cord when you're a baby, right? You should do that with your kids. They always talk about that. As you get older, you run out of stem cells. Now, this simply means that you have less ability to recover and eventually that's gonna get to you. Well, there was a 2019 study that found that at least in the gut, ketones stimulate the multiplication of stem cells. Okay, they actually found that stem cells needed ketones to multiply in the gut. So this is the beginning, and we don't know how it works in other tissues and other parts of the body, but at least in the gut, we know that there is a link between ketones and stem cells, which could be the beginning of a whole new world of research to keep us young and keep us alive for a longer period of time. Then we have number eight, which is a lack of cellular communication. 
Another reason we age and we ultimately die is because cells can't communicate with each other anymore. Brain cells aren't able to send the signal to the organs right. The organs aren't able to communicate with each other. Well, the good news is ketones are a hormone in addition to a fuel which means they have the ability to help cells communicate. That's one of the biggest benefits. Ketones that come from fasting and doing a ketogenic diet aren't just a fuel. They are a hormone that have hormone-like properties that can allow cells to communicate. So this could at least delay this issue. And lastly, the reason that people age and people die is dysregulated nutrient signaling meaning their bodies can no longer determine what glucose should be doing and how much glucose and how much fat and this and that, just dis total dysregulation of nutrients that are coming in the body. Well, I don't really need to say a whole lot here because quite honestly, this is where ketones shine, from fasting, from ketosis. If we upregulate what's called AMPK, if we allow this signaling to occur, then the body just by nature is becoming very, very good at understanding how much fuel is on hand. Simple example, when we're fasting, we're not eating. So the body has no choice but to use its natural energy sensors. It says, uh-oh, there's no food coming in, so we need to be able to determine how much energy is on hand. People ultimately get older and they ultimately die because their bodies don't know how to regulate fuel to be used. If we condition ourselves through fasting and through keto from time to time, then yes, we can learn how to use fuel that is on hand, ultimately just improving so that we don't have that dysregulation of nutrient sensory, right? So at the end of the day, we have to look at the big picture. It's all fun and games until you start getting older. You start realizing that things hurt and that your metabolism isn't the way that it used to be. And I'm not saying that any of this is a quick fix, but I am saying the research starts to add up. And the research from 2013 that showed that these were the nine pillars of aging had zero to do with keto. They were just put out there in the open as the hallmark signs of aging and slowing metabolism. But here we are with other bodies of research able to back that up and prove that, hey, we might have the ticket to living for a longer period of time. But who am I to say that? I'm still in my 30s. I'll see you in the next video.